All right. So they've got a home page and then sign into Canvas using your same ID that you use for Lola. If you ever can't get into any of your Canvas classes, check Lola. You might need to reset your password. It updates within seconds. You should be able to get back into Canvas. Um, it is important, even those of you guys that like myself, my computer remembers it. Um, that's just for speed. I actually know what it is. Um, make sure you know what your password is, or like many of my students and stuff, right? We, we hide it in our phones, this information, um, because you will need it for testing in this class. Um, we actually won't do testing in this room. We're going to travel to Building 1, which is the main building on campus. And I'll remind you as we get closer to this. We're going to take, um, you're going to take your exams on the computer uh, via a special program called Lockdown Browser, um, which is installed on the computers in that lab. It locks down the browser so you can't cheat. No internet surfing in my class during the exam. Okay. Um, and so you'll take it in the computer lab. So because of that, because you'll be logging on to Canvas to take, well, you'll be using the Lockdown Browser and then Canvas to take your exam, you need to know your username and password, right? Does that make sense? So make sure you write that down someplace secure if you can't remember it. Um, so when you come into Canvas now, you come into your dashboard. There's two different views. There's this view that I prefer. And this new view, if you slide the thing over here, you get these blocks. Um, and I don't know, it allowed me to change my titles, which was kind of cool. Made them... Um, more meaningful for, for me. Um, so you can see all the classes I'm teaching or supervising or in. Um, and so my nice big list. And you can see, just like for you guys, right, your recent activity announcements that I've posted, um, notifications, um, discussion boards. For me, it has, you know, what I need to grade. So notice these are things to grade. For you guys, of course, it's what you need to do, um, not grade. Lucky you. Uh, sometimes I want to trade with you guys. Uh, so you can click on courses, right? In the dashboard, too, you can go to any of your classes, too. You can click on any of these links. Um, so if you have it in this view, right, you can go right to a class. So let's see, where are we? We're right here. We're pink in this view. But I could have gone over here to courses, and you'll see my favorites pop-up list. If you're not seeing some of your classes, click all courses, and we'll list all your courses. You'll see that I've starred my favorites, um, things that I'm doing right now. Um, so let's go back to our class. So again, recent activity for just this class, not all your classes like you have on your dashboard. Um, are going to be listed when you come into your class. And of course, there's more stuff here, right, because I'm an instructor and I have more power. So I'm going to switch over to my student view so that it looks just like it does for you guys. All right, so no recent activity. Um, oh, it says turn in. All right, so to do, these are some of the things that you guys will do. So everything you need is under modules. So we will go right there. And I think I might actually leave student view for a minute because I'm going to take attendance. Because I think most everybody's here and I don't want to forget. OK. So Priscilla, yeah. Joshua, yeah. Jennifer. Amber, Brooke, Nikki, Haley, Deja, did I say it right? Bruce, Katrina, Jenna, <laughs> talk about perfect timing, Alex, I do miss you when you're not here. Right? I take attendance because my boss tells me to do so. Right? Um, it doesn't at all affect your grade points-wise. Like You don't get points for attendance and therefore lose them if you're not here. Uh, but of course, it will affect you if you miss information. The good news is, as you guys are witnessing right now, I record. So just go to Canvas, see what you missed, 
right? Stay caught up on things. If for some reason you're going to be out for a long period of time, that's when you need to contact me, right? Um, if you've been out for a week, you need to contact me, right? Um, let me know what's going on that would keep you away from me that long, right? Um, exams. As soon as you realize you've missed one, right? And I had a lot, as you can see, I had a lot of students this semester. Sometimes in the past, I'm nice enough and I contact you. Don't count on it, right? That's not my job. That's your job, right? You're accountable for what you need to get done, right? I'm just here to help and facilitate, right? And enter that grade you earned at the end of the semester, right? I don't give it. You earn it, right? And I'm going to tell you how you do that. Okay, we ready? All right. I see a lot of sleepy faces, man. <sighs> 8 o'clock classes are rough. Okay, so how many of you guys signed up for this class because it was 8 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> and those are the faces that are awake. <laughs> how many signed up because my name was next to it? Who referred you? Darrell. Oh, I know Darrell. Ray, my professor. Good. No bad people have gotten on there. I don't have to check it. Anyone else? Who, who recommended you? Okay. Because I, I probably know them, right? They were my good students. No, all my students are good. All my students are good. Okay, so um, they probably, if, if they're my good students, they told you the truth. Miss Erica is nice, honest, and fair, and expects the most from you, right? right. This is not an easy course. It says 211, right? Second level course, right? It's not easy. You are going to have to study. You are going to have to work, right? But it'll be worth it. And this is cool stuff, y'all. Of course, I'm biased. I love it, right? Otherwise, I probably shouldn't be sitting here, right? I should be looking for a new job. My students are like, you really love this stuff. I'm like, yeah. I'm... Otherwise, I'd be looking for a new job like some of you guys, right? So that's the next thing. So how many think they're going to be nurses? Notice I said think. Because you early in this voyage, let me tell you, right? Okay. Um, so you sign up for this course because it meets the requirements for nursing school here um, through charity, right? Uh, bad news, right? It only works for nursing schools that will accept it like charity. Microbiology, come on in. Yeah, there's a seat somewhere, I hope. <laughs> um, if you go to some other nursing school, some other four-year college, they may not count this as a microbiology course. They will count it as a science elective. To them, sometimes it's referred to as a non-majors uh, microbiology course, right? Non-science majors. Does that make sense to you guys? All right. So make sure if you know you're supposed to be taking this course, you are. Now, some of you guys may I'm, you may see me again. Right, so you've decided you want to apply to another nursing school or to another program, right? We all change our mind. I thought I was going to be a veterinarian. Look where I'm sitting, right? Okay, I changed my mind, right? You can do that, especially when an unvaccinated cat bites you. You look at the world a whole lot differently. <laughs> you decide, I don't want to put myself in this spot anymore, <laughs> right? So um, that's okay. But you need to know your options and you need to know, right, the, your possibilities. So this won't be a waste of your time by any means, right, because um, it'll better prepare you if you have to take a microbiology again, right, and it's good knowledge. And this is a good book, unlike my other class where I'm trying to change the book. This is one you want to keep, okay, and I'm going to tell you guys about some cool, cheap options for the book um, this semester, which I'm sure you'd love to hear. So those of you guys that missed my first roll call, please stay for a second afterwards so I can get you checked off, right? I have to take attendance, right? My boss tells me to. So help me out with that. So let's go right into our course. So um, this is the departmental syllabus, all the boring stuff you guys don't ever read. But it's there because I have to put it there. This is my syllabus addendum. <coughs> All the really important stuff you really want to make sure you read. Okay, so there's me and my little tiger. It's an old picture, but it's cute um, at LSU. 
So um, you can call or text me at this number. Um, it rings both my office phone and my cell phone. It's what we call a Google number, right? So if you start harassing me, I'll change the number. No one's ever done that. I've had it for a couple of years now. But, you know, so people are like, oh, you give your cell phone number out to your students? I said, I sort of do. <laughs> I cheat. Okay, so um, because of that, you can text or you can call me. My cell phone is set to go to sleep at 10 o'clock at night because that's what I do at 10 o'clock at night because I'm going to be here at 8 o'clock in the morning, right? Uh, and I have to get me and the kiddo out the door and um, to our respective schools. Um, so we were up at 6.30 this morning. So um, you have that available to you, right, if you need to get in touch with me, as well as my email, which was my old last name. When you get married, don't bother changing your last name. It's not worth it. So when I get divorced, I changed it back to my native name because Burns is really easy to spell, right, except they won't change my email here at Delgado. So I'm stuck with the perer, P-E-R-R-E, at dcc.edu. My office is unfortunately all the way over in Building 1, which is, as I said, the flagship big building on the front of the campus. We're right here in Building 2 right now, so I'll be hoofing it later on over to my office. My office doesn't look this clean, although it looks even more sterile now because they made us take down all our posters. There's some jerk in building services now that doesn't want us to hang anything up anymore. I'm not happy about it. Can you tell? So all my posters are inside my office. They come in my office at war. It ain't happening. But it looks like a pigsty right now, I warn y'all. I got to come in next Saturday and clean it. Um, I'm, I was too busy. I just kept throwing stuff in there. It became like a scary place. But uh, in the cubicle land, I'm the only one with a blue roof, right? You notice I actually have a real door and windows to the hallway, not to the outside. The auditorium's actually behind me. Um, the reason for that is there's a HEPA filter and they have really bad allergies, um, especially with all the construction and, and building one and such. Um, there are days where I just, I couldn't go to my office because it would kill me. Um, so I had to close it in so that the filter could work um, and get all that junk out of the air for me. Uh, so I could breathe. Breathing is, you know, kind of necessary for life. Just a little bit. So, um, as I said earlier, Canvas, Lola, these things are connected, same username, same password. Can't get into Canvas, make sure you check um, Lola first. Um, if you're having trouble with Canvas, we have amazing tech support for them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 36, 365 days a year. You can call them on Christmas. Micro? No. No. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Okay. So, um, I wasn't working on Christmas, but they were. Uh, <laughs> um, if you're not necessarily um, need to talk to somebody, if you're okay with doing chat, you're okay with looking at the help things, guess how do you get to all that help stuff and this phone number and all that good stuff for Canvas? You, of course, have to get into Canvas. So if there's an issue with getting into Canvas, again, go to Lola first, and in that case, call uh, our help desk, which does not work. 24 7 seven days a week um, there's my little thing I was looking for so right down here y'all help button I stopped my recording and restarted it oh crap was it not running oh well I get back this is my trial run around right? get back into the swing of things okay so ask a question to your uh, your instructor ask your oh I, I didn't even know that was there okay Search the guides. I do this all the time. You know, when I can't remember how to do something from training because it's something we do like once a semester, like add a TA to my course. Um, I just click here and I type in, you know, add somebody. And, you know, the first line I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. You go to people. <laughs> right? Oh, I remember how to do that now. Um, there's the support line, as I said, right, that phone number. Um, you can report problems. You can chat live. You can ask the community. Um, and you can submit um, features. I think some of these you guys don't have access to, um, although you might be able to submit. So this isn't what, what's called an open source, right? So, so people can submit, like, new features we want to be able to do. Like, one of them is 
getting notifications based on your class instead of like a whole big list of notifications. And I won't get into all that. You guys probably understand notifications better than I do, right? If you want to change any of your settings, go to your account, right, and change your notifications. What emails you get, when and where. Like I just do the daily digest because I'm on here all the time, so I see when you guys are doing the work and not doing the work. I don't need to be notified. Um, I would get like 800 emails a day. It would be ridiculous. So, but you, on the other hand, might want to get emails every time I post something. I don't know. You get to decide, though. So, as far as email for me, um, if you're not emailing me through Canvas, right, because if you go to Canvas, right, in the inbox, I don't know why I keep making this big because I keep wanting to show you guys things, right? So, um, My students taught me this trick. The, all these buttons used to be up here last semester. Do you guys notice that? And they put them over here. So I'm like, I'm like lost in space too right now. I'm going over here going, where's my button? And it's over here, right? So inbox, right? That's uh, email, right? Um, so um, that that's, you know, real quick, easy way. And this is the cool trick my students taught me last semester. If you right click, you can open it in a new tab. So that way you can still like go back and see what it was you were looking at and then click over and, and write your messages. So it's kind of cool. You just click right here, compose a new message. So, uh, and I'll just click back to the syllabus. So if you're not emailing me that way, if you're actually going into your account, and the good news is, is this is actually linked with your email too. So like if you email me through Canvas, I can email you back um, through Canvas or through uh, my Delgado email, which I can do all on my smartphone. Who doesn't have a smartphone? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Uh, what did we do without them? But you do have to learn to put it down, right? Okay. Especially during this class. Huh, not really, because guess what? I'm going to um, probably do some interactive stuff where you guys can use your smartphones. So. Why not? You guys have the technology. Why not make use of it? I'm not going to make you buy some stupid clicker thing that costs you 40 bucks when you already have a $500 piece of equipment in your pocket. That's stupid. If you email me through the regular Delgado email or your personal email, which they suggest that you don't do, right? Because that one's, the, your regular email is going to tell me who you are. But it's going to also not tell me another very important piece of information, which class you're in. You guys are not the only microbiology course I teach. I teach three different ones. Yours, which is microbiology human pathogens. I teach the general microbiology for science majors, and I teach the lab. I'm, in fact, the lead instructor for microbiology, so I'm in charge of everybody in microbiology. So you'll notice that when you saw my courses, right, that for the lab, I'm a TA in the lab classes, right, to keep an eye on my adjuncts and new professors that are teaching the lab. Okay? So you got to tell me what? Yeah, tell me something that lets me know what course you're in because usually your question is related to the course you're in, right? So you can say 8 a.m., right? Micro class. That's sufficient. Okay? Um, lab on Monday or Wednesday, which none of you guys are probably in lab because most of the programs you're applying to don't require it, right? No one's in lab? Yeah. It's fun, though. Y'all should come visit. Okay. Because of that, too, um, I'll bring lab stuff in so you guys actually will be able to see the real stuff, too. So I'll hoof it over um, from the other campus, other side of campus. All right, so for this course... Um, every single topic that we cover, you're going to have a list of objectives. This is your study guide, right? This is what I expect you to be able to do. Um, I have PowerPoint lectures uh, that go over each one of those topics that I will use to present in class. Um, you'll notice that I already have the first one posted. They're what are called didactic student versions, which means that I've removed some information. Because what do I expect you to do before you come to class? Read. Look up this information, right? Maybe in class via your smartphone, you will even answer some of those questions that you looked up, right? Um, the book, 
that we'll get to in a moment. You can have access to it online. When I'm working on my stuff like I was last night, right? I had the book open on 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 one window and 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 my PowerPoint in another, right? Um, that's the great thing about technology nowadays. You have access to what's referred to as ebooks. Um, and everybody's going to have access to that the first two weeks of class, okay, for free. Yay. So you can try it out, see if you like it, see if that's something you want to continue, or if you're going to want to buy um, a physical copy of the book. Um, you do also have the option, like me, I have both, right? I have the electronic version, and I have uh, the real thing sitting in my office. Sometimes it's easier for me to flip through a book, right, um, in my office. Um, when I'm at home, typically I'm sitting at the computer, um, on the couch, on the recliner, on the bed, kitchen table. I don't have room for a book. Right, it's easier just to have it on the screen, and usually what it is is a quick reference for me, right? Um, and mostly trying to remember which course is which <laughs> out of the two I teach, or three I teach for that matter. So um, discussion boards, we're going to do one each module, and there are going to be um, questions that are very um, open-ended, meaning that they don't necessarily have a right or wrong answer. Um, and it'll give us a chance to discuss and go into topics further than we have time to do in class, right? And, and it really is just follow the directions, right? So as long as you do everything you were supposed to, you won't lose points. As long as you do it within the deadline period, you won't lose points. And I'll go over how those are graded, how you access those. Um, the Connect software that we use, uh, you're required to use. You do have to pay for access to this. This is also how you'll gain free access to the textbook in the beginning and how if you want to buy a cheap version instead of going to the bookstore and getting basically raped. Um, <laughs> you have another option, right, um, to spend less money on textbooks. And I'll show you guys that information. So here's your textbook. As I said, it really is a good one. You'll probably want to keep it. Um, you can go to the textbook links and I have all that in another document for you guys and see how much it'll cost you if you are using your financial aid or something like that for it and what information I do have so far for that. Um, I don't go over student contact code or anything like that. I mean, you guys are sophomores, at least second semester college students. You should know how you should behave and conduct yourself um, in this setting. Um, I have to say I've had very, very few problems with people not understanding what they're supposed to do. But for some reason, um, right, if we need to refer to that, we will. And I have to let you know where it is, right? So there's the link in the catalog, right, to student responsibilities, right? How you're expected to conduct yourself in college. Attendance, as I said, um, I have to retake it. Um, the first 14 days, I absolutely buy the college, not just my boss. If you do not show up, I will have to drop you. Um, so this applies to all your classes here at Delgado. Um, if you don't show up the first two weeks, they will drop you. Um, and it's going to be really hard for you to get back into a class, especially like this course, where it's a full class and there are people waiting in the wings to steal your spot, right? Um, don't let that happen to you. Contact your instructor, right? If something happens, right, you get sick, you get in a car accident, you're in the hospital, you're in jail, that's really not good contact them, right, so that they don't drop you, right, if arrangements can be made. Does that make sense? Okay, I'll continue to take attendance, but I will not, after the 14 day, have the ability to drop you, and I will not. Even when I had the ability, I didn't do it. That's your job. Notice it says, student's responsibility. If you decide you don't like me, you don't like this class, you can't handle it for whatever reason, right, you need to drop this course. Right? You have all the way until like April something or other, I have it on my schedule, to bail if you want to. Right? Um, and some instructors have suggested too that you, you stick it, if it's because it's kind of tough, right, and you're like failing, which, y'all, if you're having trouble, what do you need to do? Come see me. Right? I've been teaching for a long time, like 10 years plus, right? I have dyslexia. It was not easy for me when I was in school. My dad is like, why is she going to grad school to my mom? School's hard for her. She's like, it's not about hard. She likes it, <laughs> right? 
Um, and yeah, for some of us, it's hard, right? You got to read it like three or four times to get it. But that's okay, right? But you have to recognize that you got to do that, right? And if you need some tips, right? And in my other class, my majors class, man, y'all, they were on it. They are already in my class. They're already forming study groups and everything. So um, take a lesson from them. They know what they're doing, right? Um, if you know that that's the type of thing that will help you out, right? Use this course. Use our discussion board. Hook up with each other, right? And it does, and we live in the virtual world. You can Skype, right? You don't even have to be in the same room at the same time. You could be halfway across the country, like I am with my family, right? Um, but if that type of interaction works for you, seek it out. Find it early, right? Pair up with somebody good. I used to tutor all the time when I was in school. I took calculus for fun. I know, you think I'm crazy, right? <laughs> Math is easy for me, right? Numbers make sense. Words, on the other hand, not so much, right? How is it you can spell a word four different ways? So English language is how, okay? So, you know, I tutored. And my friends are like, why are you helping those guys, right? You know this stuff. I'm like, yeah, I know I know it because I can teach it to them, and he's cute. <laughs> so... You know, there can be alternative motives to it as well, right? Never got him to go out with me, though. <laughs> I tried. He wasn't interested. But that's okay. He got an A in calculus because of me. All right, so everyone understand about attendance? It's important. Okay. All right. So, learning objectives. So, what are we going to do? We're going to have exams, of course. Those are going to be a big chunk, right? We're going to have our connect assignments, which I'll go over in a moment. We're going to have our discussion boards, right? So, you have other ways of earning credit other than just exams, especially for some of us that exams kind of scare the hell out of us, right? But um, no curveballs here, right? I'm straightforward woman. So those assignments are 25% of your overall grade. Your final exam is 25%. That's departmental mandated for my department. Yes, if you have an A in the course, you still have to take the final exam. Right? Final exam is required. In fact, you'll fail the course if you don't take it. Um, the exams will make up 50%, right? the big chunk of your overall grade. We're going to have four modules in this course, three that I'll lecture on and one you will work on outside of class. Um, yeah. Rewind. Wrong class. Four modules that I will lecture on. <laughs> you guys are not majors, right? Not considered majors. You guys have plenty of work. I won't give you outside a project to work on. <laughs> not in this class. All right, four modules. First module, all right, covers these topics, which as you can see, they pretty much match up with these chapters um, in your book. Um, second module, right, you're like, woohoo, we went from five chapters to three. <laughs> Not really. Um, some of these chapters, right, we don't cover every single little thing, right, uh, but quite a bit. Um, these chapters, we will cover every darn thing in, in their thick in your book, right, and this is the important stuff. This is the stuff that my students write thank you letters when they get into nursing school at charity for, because this is my love. Immunology is what I went to grad school for, is what got me interested and hooked on science when I was in school. This is the cool stuff, right? And nowadays, you guys are knowing more and more, because more is out there in TV commercials and TV programs and in the general media, right? And if you actually read good sites on the internet. Good sites, right? We'll talk about the difference between good internet and bad internet information. Um, so, but, you know, this is the stuff, if you've got a really good foundation in, you're going to thank me when you get to nursing school, and I kid you not, I get those thank you letters, um, because you'll be leading those study groups, right? Um, because you will know it, and the rest of them don't, okay? Um, and then we'll get into the stuff that you guys really like and find relatively easy, is we're going to go through the different diseases caused by microorganisms, right? And we're going to go by systems of the body, but first, we're going to start out with wounds, right? And as you'll see, progress to skin, respiratory. Um, and then you'll see there's some other chapters that I'm going to tell you to refer to. But I'm not going to lecture directly on. Um, I'm going to mention. 
And some of that information I'm not going to hold you to for testing purposes because I don't want you guys memorizing a whole bunch of stuff you could look up in a book, right? I got a B in my immunology course at, at LSU because I refuse to memorize my professor's research. I'm like, dude, I can look it up. That you're crowding my brain with information I don't want to put there. Okay? <laughs> I can look it up in a book. The important thing is understanding these concepts, right? So to help and to make sure of that, we're going to talk about them. I'm not going to make you memorize them for a test. You are going to do connect assignments on them, though, so that I know you have looked at this material. Make sense? Okay. So. And then notice one of them is urogenital infections. I don't talk about STDs in class, mostly because I don't want my students to tell me which ones they've had. <laughs> it happens. I don't want to know. That, and at this point, most of us should already know about this, right? Okay. Do we have one more page? Ah, the important stuff. So, I gave you the percentages, but here are the points, right? There's going to be a total of 265 points in Connect. Wow, that's a lot, right? <laughs> that's because there's 2,000 points in this course. Because when I was designing this course, which has been nationally approved um, for quality, um, the Connect assignments were so low points, students tended not to do them, right? So I had to do a little psychology on you guys and make them worth more points so you would do them. Does that make sense? All right, so notice two tests are kind of weird number, 250 points, right? Final, 500. Um, you'll do an agreement assignment. Um, you're going to do an introductory assignment in the discussion boards. Um, you'll do an end of the course survey because I really do want your guys' feedback and I really do listen to it. Um, and change aspects of my course based on um, what students suggest um, would be helpful. So when I first started teaching, I didn't, we had um, Grade Summit, this weird system of homework stuff for you guys. Um, and um, even before that, we didn't have like online homework for you guys, and I didn't assign it. And my students failed their first test, most of them. And I was like, what is going on? And, and, and I was like, are you guys doing the questions at the end of the chapter? They're like, uh, no. I'm like, why not? You didn't sign them. I have to assign them? When I was in college, y'all, my teachers didn't assign homework. <laughs> you just did the questions at the back of the chapter after we finished the chapter. And then they still weren't doing well. And I was like, what's wrong? They're like, well, you didn't give us any points for doing it, so we didn't do it. I'm like, you're serious, right? Okay, fine, I'll collect them. <laughs> right? Do your work. Okay, guys, I'm not going to collect my didacted PowerPoints, right? Connect. And connect, unlike some of your other teachers, I have spent time and hand-picked the questions and connect. They are worth your time, right? I spent the time, they're worth your time. They will help you. If you want to see my reviews from my, the feedback, right, I'll, I'll make some of them available to you guys. The students say, do the connect assignments. It helped me with my test, right? Do them on time. Do not wait, right? If you don't believe me, I'll let you see what they had to say, right? So again, I'll, I'll want to know what you had to say, right? What changes have I made that you like or don't like? Um, and then again, we're going to have those discussion boards. Um, they're 50 points apiece. And again, so you guys will do them. You add up all your points, which Canvas will do this for you. Um, I can't go to grades right now because I'm not in student view. Any students with disabilities, you've got to go to Amanda Hassan, right? Um, building one, building two. Other side of the building, just past the answer center. She's great. Um, and make sure that you get your documentation letter to me. Um, even if I haven't received it yet, go ahead and contact me. Um, come by the office, talk to me after class, call me on the phone, text me, whatever it is, so that we can hook up and make sure that you get the accommodations that you need. Um, I need to know this as soon as possible so that I can make those arrangements. Um, pretty much 
Um, the only thing that usually affects you guys is testing. Uh, you won't go to the big group testing like I talked about earlier in Building 1. You'll go upstairs to the third floor, and um, Ms. Katie has the quiet room um, for students that need the quiet room or extended time. Um, so, but you gotta you got to schedule that. you got to get with me um, so that we can get that uh, coordinated. All right, so make sure you do that as soon as possible. And as I said, I struggled myself, so I know what it's like, right? Um, so um, I'm here to help. Anything I can do, I will do within reason. Okay, so for discussion boards, you know, this, this isn't text chat, y'all, right? You're college students, right? This is conversations with your student body um, practicing writing, like complete sentences, right? Spell check. Maybe read it once or twice. Maybe like save it, come back to it, read it again before you post it, right? Um, so that you you're like, oh wow, okay, I, I I didn't write that right. Even I do that sometimes, right? The good news is that even if you do post it, you can edit it. So if you notice, right, change it. All right. So again, I'm not going to go over the etiquette stuff other than one thing. Do not do caps lock, right? Writing all in capital letters. It's like shouting when you're doing that online. Um, no one likes to be shouted at, right? We shut down, right? A lot of us, when you shout at us, you're like, okay, right? Um, when you do that in writing, you get the same response. They don't listen to you. They don't look at you. They don't read what you have to say, right? Because it's difficult because it's all in caps. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. So that's the important syllabus stuff. So it, as you can see, it's right there on Canvas for you guys to access. You can even print it out. This is the departmental syllabus, right? Um, which has got a lot of stuff that most of you guys already know. And next is the stuff you want to know about, which is textbook stuff. So here's our textbook. As I said, it is a really good textbook. You'll notice I've put a copy on the reserve at the library. Our library is unfortunately still located in Building 10. I don't know when they're going to make the transition to the beautiful new building. We've got lots of library friends. They're all excited. I definitely want to be in that new building. I want to go hang out in that new building. I haven't even been in it yet. Um, there's supposedly study rooms for you guys, all kinds of great resources. Um, they just haven't gotten the go-ahead yet, and I, I don't know why. But So for right now, Building 10, which is right behind us here, first floor, right-hand side, you have to have your Delgado ID. Um, anyone not have their Delgado ID yet? Okay. Um, building 1, the back of it, you see the little part to it called the annex where campus police is. You walk around behind campus police, and those double doors is right there is the ID office. Which also, what else is right next to that ID office, which is awesome for science students here at Delgado? The tutor lab, right? Anybody who's taken anatomy and physiology, raise your hands, right? How many hours did you spend in there? You didn't bother counting, right? Excellent place. You guys don't know how blessed you are to have that, right? Um, use it. Use it because if you don't use it, you will lose it, right? Funding is based on use. If you don't use it, it will go away. Right? So um, use that resource. Tell your friends about it. Um, it usually gets pretty crowded around A&P testing time, though. <laughs> um, so that's one thing, right? If you're super cheap, just go read the book in the library. Um, <laughs> it's on reserve for two hours. You might be fighting with someone else. Your other option is going to the bookstore, but as you can see right now, someone get that for me so I don't have to close the door. Most of the ones, I guess, that were coming this morning should have made it here by now anyways. So um, with the Connect code, and I don't know if that includes the ebook right now, um, $126.30 is probably before taxes, too. Oh, Lord Jesus. Um, <laughs> and it's loose leaf, right? That's the cheap version even still. Yeah, it's... It's in a binder, right, but it's three-hole punched, right? So it's not a hard copy.
cover one. So what does that mean? At the end of the semester, can you sell it back to the bookstore? No, that's why you'll notice there's no used books for this section, right? Because there's no hardcovers. There's no way for them to know all the pages are there, right? That's why they won't take them. Um, uh, you can go over to the West Bank, of course, it'll be the same price. Via Connect, which is the button in my course that I will show you next. Um, you have one option this semester and for your Connect assignments is $52, but it does come with the ebook, right? Um, and then if you don't like the ebook, once you purchase this $52 Connect code and ebook through the Connect website, you can click this other button right here, and they will send you a copy, a loose leaf copy, just like what you get at the bookstore. Guess for how much? Fifteen bucks. <coughs> Can't beat that. Fifteen plus fifty-two. Sixty-seven dollars. That's not bad. All right, I want to hear any excuses, y'all. After your two-week trial is up, right, I want everybody, and you can even right now, if you've got monies, right, sign up for the courtesy access first. Well, actually, for you guys, it doesn't matter because this one has... The, you know, go ahead and just buy it outright, right, if you can right now. If you can't, I'm not opposed to you guys standing on the street corner and begging for money. I need money for my textbook. I might even throw you a dollar. But I don't want to hear any excuses, right, on why you can't pay for your assignments. I'm serious about it, okay? And there is money out there other than standing on the street corner, right? So if you're having trouble, come see me. Go to Single Stop right? You guys have a great resource, right? There's no reason for you not have the things you need for this class. Does that make sense to you guys? All right. I know it's tough. I was in your shoes once, right? I, I, I can't eat ramen noodles to this day. That and I found out I'm gluten intolerant, so, you know, I've been there. Okay, so next. Any questions on that? Uh huh. Um. Did you put your code in before? Okay. Right. So when okay. So his question was: I bought the book before. I dropped the class. I used my code. Is my code still good? Um. Let me cover this, and, and I'm going to cover yours. Um. So there's my schedule. Right. Um, so you'll notice that after this class, I'm in here again. So it's a good chance if you have a quick question, right, I'll still be sitting here. I'm going to sit here for another hour and 15 minutes um, before I run off to my office on Tuesdays. On Thursdays, I will literally be running across campus to lab. So um, don't be looking for me Thursday afternoons. But Tuesday and Wednesday afternoons are going to be your best chance to catch me. Um, although I may be around most Fridays, most of the time I'm in the lab prepping, Right, going to meetings, doing a bunch of other things that I'm responsible to do now that I'm lead instructor. Um, and then I have office hours on, on Monday afternoon. Monday morning I have yoga class. That's the part of taking care of me better. So, uh, let's go to the next one because it should be our <laughs> Connect stuff. Yep, and it is. So, actually, I'll go into student view so that it looks like it's supposed to for you guys, not edit mode. So modules, right? So, so far we've done solicitendum, right? Textbook options, my schedule. Here's your first assignment, uh, register for courtesy access of McGraw-Hill. I expect you guys to do this today, right? Or definitely by Wednesday because you're going to need to do this to be able to be prepared for Thursday's class, right? Um, so, if you have registered before, so the first time, notice it's going to have you click I agree, and I don't know that will let me go through this because I'm not really a student. Okay, so then it's going to give you this screen. You click on connect. You're going to put in your email. If you've had an account before, right, um, you may have forgot your password or something like that, right? You can click get help, right? You can find your account, all that jazz. 
The other thing is too is once you're into your Connect account, which let me pull up mine. This is a different class, doesn't matter though. Um, go up here to my account and it will tell you like how long your access is for, what access you have and all that. Okay. So that way you can maybe use it until it expires and then buy your code or decide. Um, or call them and see if they can make a deal for you. Make sense? Everyone's good? So that's number one homework assignment. Click, register, right? Um, I think I even got pictures. I mean, registration is really easy, but if for some reason... I've got a picture document that walks you through it if you need it and has um, their contact information. I'll add that um, literally at the end of class. Then the next thing I want you guys to do is an introduction assignment. And this is kind of fun. This will give us a chance to get to know each other. You're going to go um, to this website and it should open a new link, but let's see. Yep. You'll scroll down to the bottom, click English, unless you know Portuguese or something like that. You have to put in your name, but of course it can be any name. But, you know. You don't have to put in your email address, although if you do, they won't send you anything. I've never gotten anything. They do want to know what your job is, right? So you have to put that in, and they want to know how satisfied you are, right? So I'm completely satisfied, other than like before, I should be looking for a new job if I'm not, right? Which might be the case for you guys. And then you scroll down to question one. It won't let you go unless you put these three things in, right? So then you click. You know, student counts as a job, by the way. So does mom or dad or, you know, any of those things. Um, and then the other thing that students run into problems with is that you have to rank these, right? So you have to rank these in order from most important to least important, right? So what's the most important thing to you in this list? So for me, it would be family, right? And then I love food, right? So two, right? Can I pick two again? No, you can only use each number once, but notice it will let me use it twice, right? Ah. And then when you do that, if you make that mistake, it clears it. <laughs> you can just start all over, right? And we can't go to the next question, right? So you only can pick each number once. Make sense? There are 10 questions, they're all like this, where you got to rank. Uh, right, and then go to the next one, do the same thing, 10 times. Right, then when you get done, you're going to get a result. Um, you'll see I already posted mine, right, and I even hyperlinked to it. Everybody always copies this whole thing. Right? Right here, down here, is what's different for everybody. All of this stuff up here is exactly the same. Right? So, you just copy from here, down, right? Right click, copy, right? Go to the discussion board, right underneath the instructions, you click reply. Right? And you put your thing in there. And then you're going to write, does this fit you or not? Right? The instructions say, do this quiz, right? Copy and paste your results. Um, note it starts at that bold point that I pointed out to you. Um, and then tell us if it fits you or not. All right? And then you can write anything else you want to let us know about yourself. Right? Um, and then you have to respond to at least two other classmates. Um, apparently this doesn't give you the option to save. Just post reply. Which I'm not going to do because you'll notice I've already done my homework. Right? It's right there. Okay? The other cool thing about the discussion boards is you can shrink them up like so. So when I collapse it like this, we'll see April's already done her homework. Yay, April! Right? Um, and she's a white knight. How cool is that? So maybe you think, oh, you know, I want to say hi to April. So how do you do that? You go ahead and click on the post, and it'll expand. And at the bottom of her post, you can reply to her. You need to do that to at least two of your classmates by next week. What's the deadline I got posted here? January 25th, right? And then I'll go in and I will grade. 
The other thing that I will do is I will comment on every single person's post, right, to kind of get to know you guys. So if I ask you a question, please um, respond to that. So what I mean by that is under grades, you'll notice that once you do an assignment, right, you'll have a score here. Um, and you'll be able to click on it. I don't have anything done in this class. Um, I'm trying to think which one I have one an example done in to show you guys. It needs to go in the responses. Like how do we respond? Do we ask a question? Do we just make a statement? For what? Is it to um, respond to classmates? Right. So if you if you read what she had to say, like what April had to say, let's let's use April as an example since she already did it and she's in our class. This is the only one I'm enrolled in as a student, anyways. So let's go back to the discussion board. And so notice right here, like I could get to it too real quickly. Right, brought me right to the discussion board. So I read April's. Oldest of five children. Wow. <laughs> Can you guys see it or do I need to blow it up? My old man eyes, you know. Nursing major, not surprised. So, how many of you guys are nursing majors? Well, you have that in common with her, right? You could be like, hey, April, I'm a nursing major too. Welcome to the group, right? I mean, it doesn't have to be anything detailed, right? Or, you know, there were nine people in my family. No, three. <laughs> I went to school with someone who had nine siblings, though, right? Um, you know, find some common ground to basically just say a quick hello, right? Um, and, get, and try to get to know some of your other classmates. That's what this exercise is for, right? Um, for us to be able to get to know each other. Um, nursing majors. Um, Wellington Coleman. We have two Colemans here at Delgado in the science department. Clint Coleman, who does um, laboratory science program. Um, really cool biotech uh, program we just got approved for, so if you're interested in stuff like that and you decide maybe not to become a nurse, um, go go ask about that or ask me about that and I'll, I'll send you in that direction. Um, then there's Wellington Coleman, older, gorgeous black gentleman. He's one of my favorite guys here. The sweetest guy you'll ever meet. He is a registered nurse and his... What is it? It's some type of psychology degree he has. I mean, he's just so cool. Um, and he volunteers his time for you guys. Uh, he works on Saturdays. I saw him this Saturday as I was trying to troubleshoot some issues with lab. And um, he does a special study group for nurses um, on Saturdays from 2 to 5 at the, the um, study lab that we were talking about for you guys. Um, so if you know you're, you're not quite sure, like, what nursing is all about, you'd like to talk to a real nurse who's really done it, who's super cool and really looks forward to working with you guys, um, go check him out um, Saturdays from 2 to 5. He teaches class um, in the, um, throughout the day on Saturday and stays late um, to help out nursing students. So if that's something um, you may think you, you'll benefit from, go meet him. Go say hi anyways. Um, like I said, he's super cool. His office is right across from mine. It's got a sign on it, unless they took it down or made him take it down, of some ballerina feet. Um, it says something like, you know, everyone wants to do this until they find out how hard it is. Same thing with nursing, right? So um, I think that's it for me, other than I want to point you guys to that. What are we doing for homework? I shouldn't have said it. You're going to pack up before I stop talking. OK, what are you doing? Right, sign up for courtesy access at least, or go ahead and register for Connect, right? So you can start reading your book. And what else are you going to do? 
the introduction, right? At least do your initial post, right? Um, but make sure you get your replies done by next week. And then we're going to start real stuff, right? Not to say that today's not real, right? And I've done a new setup. So under module one, right, before class, right, here's your study guide. Here's the objectives. Read chapter one. You can go right to it via Connect, right? Especially if you registered for the free access, which everyone can for two weeks. Then here is your didacted PowerPoint that I'm going to use next time, right? You can print it out. You can bring your computer to class. You can do whatever you want. You can view it right here in the, um, in the browser. After class, I will post the recorded lecture here. This will actually become a link. You're expected to study the topic, right? And then do your connect assignment, right? Notice it's already linked up. I can't link directly to the assignments just to connect right now. Um, McGraw-Hill hasn't got their act together when it comes to Canvas yet. So the best I can do is that single sign-on link for you guys. So that's what I have linked up for you. All right, I look forward to hearing all your voices Thursday. Bring your coffee if you need to.